for the bit where please didn't. Oh, I thought you yeah. said move. Okay. No, no. It's, <laughs> what? I've got to do an intro. Introduce yourself, Martin. Yeah, Miss Pat, could you just say who you are and just uh, to I'm me? I'm comedian to, Miss Pat. Yeah. Here in lovely Indianapolis, Indiana. In, I'm in Indiana. You in Indiana? Yeah, where you they sure? grow corn. Do you grow corn? <laughs> they grow corn. I don't know yeah. shit. Do you go out to the cornfields? Are you crazy? <laughs> Why not? You can just go and have a look that at them. That shit will fuck my hair up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm look. a black woman. I take the... pride in my hair. No, I'm not it could be, It could be a new look. Get some uh, corn sticking out of it. Uh, no, sir. Okay. No, sir. We okay. create new looks all the time. <laughs> and it, it has something to do with a blow dryer. You're not running through a damn cornfield. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so... We were just talking about like when you're on stage, it kind of you feel freedom. Now, could you explain that? What? Why did you feel so free? Well, when I first started off being a comic, it's like you know, you with, with being a comic, you got to find that point. You got to find you. So once I found once I found a point in my career where I was comfortable, I started to talk about myself, and I can say anything. I mean, I talk about. You know, about the times I had two kids at 14, on that stage, I don't leave nothing out. Because mm. I feel like when, when, you, when you've been through stuff in your life, when you can look back and laugh at it, then that situation don't have control of you anymore. Very good. Yeah, because like, you've had a very eventful life so far. Is this what you call it, eventful? <laughs> well, it's, 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 Here in the States, we call it tragic. <laughs> <laughs> A tragically, <laughs> an event full, full of tragedy. So if yeah. you could explain a bit I've about that. I've been through some shit. I yeah, because you, you, uh, you got pregnant when you were 14. I got pregnant when I was 14 by a married man. Mm -hmm. um, at the time, I was in elementary school, so I gave birth to my first kid at 14. Mm -hmm. I had another kid at 15. And then I got pregnant again at 16 by the same married man. And um, I went through the court system. And I didn't want to have the baby. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, I can't, I can't even get a job. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting here and I keep getting pregnant. And some just t went off, a light bulb went off in my head. It was like, I can't keep doing this shit. Yeah. So I asked my mom to um, get me an abortion. And she said she don't believe in abortion. I said, well, well we believe in poverty. And ain't nobody told me what the hook to do <laughs> to keep from getting pregnant. So I decided to go out and get me an abortion when I was 16. Yeah. And... Um, I was in a very, very bad relationship for 10 years with this married man. So, like, what, this guy is married. You he know, was do, married. Does, he, does his wife know about you? And Not at first. Yeah. She comes, she shows up when I'm about, I guess about four months, five months pregnant, pregnant by him. Yeah. Probably three months, I don't remember. Uh, I was barely showing, so probably three months pregnant. She shows up and she knocks on the door, she introduces herself, oh, excuse me, as his wife. Yeah, and I'm a I'm a 13 year old girl. I'm like wife. How the hell are you his wife? I'm his yeah. girlfriend. You got to be his girlfriend first. Yeah. It didn't register. And yeah. she was like, "How old are you?" And I was like, 13. So we go outside and we talk, and you know, she wanted me to get an abortion, and I was like, "No, nah, I don't really want to have no abortion. I want to keep this baby." No, I'm ahead. thinking if I I mean, I was thinking if I kept that baby, finally. In my life, I have somebody that loves me. So mm. I decided to keep the baby. Mm. How, how old was the guy? He was 21 or 22. So did he not get into trouble about this? No. Nobody gave a fuck about me for some reason. He go to jail now. Yeah, fuck <laughs> so, you know, but, but I mean, like, your mama, you, you know. What was Nobody like? cared. I mean, no. He came around all the time and picked me up and, you know, took me to his sister's house on the summer, in the summer times. And nobody... It, it was almost like it wasn't a... People just turned, looked the other it. way. Yeah. They looked the other way. But no one ever said anything to you about it? Or? I had a, my mama had a caseworker named Miss Stewart, and um, she was trying to get my mama to, you know, do something about, hey, this girl is 12 years old, pregnant by a grown man. Oh, yeah. And my mama didn't have time for that, so... But like 12 years old, were you a, a mature 12? I was 12? very developed, yes. Yeah. I was fuckable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But, I mean, the suit, you, you might. I wasn't fuckable, but I had a nice. Fi I was, I was, big boobs and, you know, nice figure and, you know. But the, the guy, like the 20, 21 year old guy, you know, right? So he sees you on the street, you look very voluptuous, et cetera, et cetera, and then he asks you your age. You, you know, he's like, well, I'm at twelve. At first, <laughs> no. At first, I was like, I was hanging out with my sister, so I was like, oh, I'm, 
I'm 18, you know, because oh, that's, okay. that's what my system tell me to yeah. say. So the next day he come back, which I was really shocked, and then I told him my real age. Well, look. my mama told him, she's like, you like my 12-year-old baby? He's like, 12? Shit. But, you know, most yeah. people, I mean, a guy with some sense would have gotten up and said, you 12, I got to get the fuck home. Yeah. Not him. He saw an opportunity. So do you think you were just so naive and just easily manipulated? Yes. Yeah. yes. Very naive. I mean, and you know, as I got older, um, I started to realize, I was like, I took a lot of that shit. Because when you grow up in an environment like that, you searching for something, especially a young girl. Mm. And I, I realized I was searching for love. I think I was, I know I was searching for like some guy that's like a father figure because I thought he was everything. Mm. I really did. I thought he was everything after I fell in love with him. Yeah. If I mean, if he didn't, if he didn't say it, it, it wasn't right. So he just, like a I can Tina Turner situation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. So, but like, he didn't help with the comedy career. <laughs> no. And, and you weren't doing a singing act, or No, I wasn't doing a singing <laughs> act. But yeah, like I can Tina Turner. So he was also like, you know, what I've read and heard that he was quite violent towards you as well. Yeah, he shot me. Um, uh, how, so what, why did he? Sh what, 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 rewind that. How, how did he shoot you? And why did he shoot you? How did that? Well, happen? I used. To, we used to fight a lot. You mm -hmm. know, after I got a little older, after I had my second baby, I started to hit back. Mm -hmm. But I also used to do stuff like where, because, uh, you know, as a kid I was taught, it, my mama said, if a man don't hit you, he don't love you. So I thought the more time I got my black, the more time he hit me in my eye, the more he loved me. Shit. So I would do stuff like go out and try to date other guys and make him really jealous. Mm -hmm. So he came over one day and um, it was a guy there and we all we get to fighting and the boy ran off and he hit me with the gun and the gun and the gun went off and it just told like the back it didn't I don't, it didn't go in it just put a nice little hole back there. What the back of your head? Yeah. So you got shot in the head by your boyfriend. Yes. <laughs> by my baby daddy. Yeah. <laughs> so um, so how was the relationship the next day? Um, it was great. <laughs> I thought I was in love. <laughs> but, <laughs> Did, you must, did any friends, were any of your friends going, look, oh, you know, you must have told a story to someone you accidentally got shot, or he shot you in the head, then... Well, yeah, I have yeah. friends all the time, girlfriends all the time telling me to leave him. Yeah. But you can't tell somebody something. I mean, people don't listen to that. You know, people really have to get stop doing stuff stuff when they're when they're fed up. Yeah. Like yeah. you can't just tell people you on drugs, stop using drugs. No, when I'm at the bottom and I'm tired of using drugs, uh people would never stop doing something because you want them to. Yeah, you can't tell anyone anything. Yeah, cuz people would go around saying rabbit is never going to leave him. And mm. I I started to believe I was never going to leave him. So th this was your life, that was going to be your life forever. That's what I thought. Shit. I mean, but he just kept having kids and I mean, you get to a point, I mean, it was, I, I, I thought once I took him from his wife that I had something good. But, you know, in, in the end, I realized she was like, you can have that bullshit. <laughs> <Go away. laughs> so she walked away, and um, I think I'm 15. I think I got pregnant my second kid. I really thought I had something. Mm. But I didn't have shit. So were you living together at this point? We, you know what? I spent 10 years in a relationship with this dude and never lived. He, it, you know what's crazy? He always lived with another woman. No way. No way. Yes, I never lived with this dude. So how many women did you have on the go? Um, sh it was so many women. Yeah. And if you seen him, <laughs> you'd be like, what? <laughs> so, I mean, it was a lot of women, yeah. a lot of babies. So. You, yeah, big population explosion in Atlanta. Around well, that with him, yeah, I think he probably got about fifteen, twenty kids. Yeah, I was, I, only, I was only pregnant twice, three times by him, and every time I was pregnant, it was somebody else already pregnant, always pregnant with me. Mm, I remember being at the clinic and seeing baby mamas. We all pregnant by the same dude, and we got an attitude. Well, why don't we get together and whoop this fucking? Yeah, ass? you know what I mean, fucking. So, how did you kind of? get away from him in the end how did that come about you know i just got tired of the cheating and, and uh him putting his hand on me mm. and um just disrespecting me i mean he would i think really the drop the, the 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 point when i when i knew it was over um he started messing with this crackhead named tinkerbell Tinkerbell. <laughs> 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 I don't know why crackhead named Tinkerbell. But he started messing with this crackhead 
And she was sleeping with everybody in the, in the neighborhood. And I was like, oh, shit, he's sleeping yeah. with a crackhead. And then he would just do some disrespect for stuff, you know, because I was a drug dealer. So he would do mm. some disrespect for shit with her in front of me. Mm. And I remember going home and I prayed and I said, Lord, I said, I've asked you for years to change this nigga. I said, but fuck him. Can you change me? And I went to bed and woke up and, and never touched him again. I, I, didn't, I said, I don't want to hate him, but I want mm. you to take the desire that I have for this yeah. man away. And I, it was gone. Well, he cool. could nobody, I couldn't even believe it. Yeah. I was like, I really don't want him? Yeah. It would like literally just disappeared overnight. Well, he didn't disappear. He no, kept you, trying the to feel, get it. The yeah, feeling, the feeling, the feeling, was yeah. Gone. yeah. And then that next weekend, I met my husband. Ah. I went to a stand up comedy and uh it was a it was stand up comedy and um lip singing. Lip lip singing? Yeah, like they're singing the song but they oh. really ain't singing. Karaoke, karaoke. Ka- karaoke, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was lip singing contest. So we went we, I went there with some girlfriends and my husband was there with his brother. Ah, okay. So yes. that kind of it was so you were single for like a week, maybe? I was always single. He uh, was never single. <laughs> uh, so, so you just mentioned you were a drug dealer. Like, uh, you know, I, I've never been a drug dealer because I'm, I'm not saying I never wouldn't be. But I mean, <laughs> how, how did you become a drug dealer? Did you like go down to the employment center and say, uh, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I became a drug dealer because um, it was really it had, crack had just hit the black community in the mm. early 80s. <clears throat> so by this time, it's 86 and I got. 86, it's 86 or 87 and I have two kids. Mm-hmm. And so I went and I looked for a job, but I was I was actually supposed to be in high school. So I was too young to get a job, I was 15. Yeah. And nobody gonna hire no 15 year old. It's against the law to even work a 15 year old 40 hours. Yeah. And people was like, you 15, well, you know, you need a work permit. And I remember going on an interview one day and I go, uh, the guy was like, you need a work permit. I said, I have one. Hold on one second. I went and got my two kids. I said, meet my work permit. Ashley and I killed. Yeah. And did, did, but you still didn't get, didn't get I didn't get no, I couldn't get a job. I was too young. Yeah. So crack was really popular in the black community. It was easy because I was already there. Mm. So um, after my kids, my kids' father was doing it first, but after he went to jail, I didn't, I didn't have no money. So I went over to my old neighborhood and everybody was doing it. So... I started selling it with a friend. So, so how do you, how do you, because you know you see it in the TV and the films that you know if someone starts selling on someone's you know street corner or something like that, you all get shot. And is, is it or is it? Did you have to go to someone first and get permission? Or no, I went to my old neighborhood where yeah. I kind of grew up. Everyone knew you. And so. Everybody knew me. I went in with a well, I had a friend selling it for me, and he was like, "Why don't we do it together?" Yeah. So we started doing it together, and we made a lot of money. I was gonna say, you know, I'm not the IRS, but. You know. Oh well, then I mean I've done my time for that mm, shit. Yeah, is that what tens of thousands of dollars or? Yeah, we we used to make about um, probably between five to almost ten thousand dollars a day. What? We made a <laughs> lot, and I went through a lot of money. So what were you what were you spending it on? Ah, uh, him, his hoes, um, dumb shit, black folk shit, cars, Jordans. <laughs> <laughs> Jewelry, I don't have any gold teeth, thank God. <laughs> just dumb shit. So you just went through the money? Went through the money. I mean, I was making it. I'm 15, living in a $1,000 apartment, um, driving good. I probably had like seven or eight cars with a learner's permit. <laughs> yeah, because I've heard that you used to hire. I used to hire crackheads to ride in the car with me. Um, because I, I had a learner's permit, and Georgia is big on learner's permit. Yeah. You got to have a licensed driver. Yeah. So crackheads was coming shift. Hey, you ride with me for four hours, and he ride me, and I would give him, let him smoke crack in the car while I was riding around selling crack. <laughs> <laughs> but was it ever dangerous? You know, because it's, you know, I've, we've heard the story of about your other shooting. You know, so. Well, oh, was getting shot in the breast. Yeah, it was dangerous. You, you know, I mean, I thank God every day that I didn't get killed and you know and I only been shot twice <laughs> and it wasn't deadly I, I lost I mean I lost a lot of childhood friends so a lot of people get killed it wasn't you know mm. in that type of environment you know you see a motherfucker get killed okay he didn't Shit. make it is it just as brutal as that just I mean you, it's, you keep it moving yeah. until it only affect black people 
when white people kill us. Yeah. <laughs> I hate to say that, but that's the only fair. time it really fucking affect yeah. us. But if it's just a shootout between you know, two black people, oh, okay, move, duck, get out the way. Yeah. He didn't make it. There's no marches. There's no crying from everybody. There's no CNN. Do you think it would be better if there was? Fuck yeah. I yeah. mean, black on black violence has been going on for you. Yeah. From a long time. Yeah. So yes, uh, if it was, I think if it was brought to, um, to the media front, like, well, you know, when some white man kills, yeah, us, the cops, it would it. probably make some people go, "Way this shit is stupid." Yeah, because yeah, a lot of people are being shot, aren't they? Yeah, Chicago had Baltimore had uh, thirty nine killings yeah. last week, and Chicago had forty something. Fucking hell, it's a lot of people. Yeah, excuse my French, but did you did you get? I heard you got. Shot what in, in, in the, a breast. I got yeah. shot in the breast by a guy, and um, <laughs> he fucked my nipple up and blew my titty apart. So what? So you know, was it an argument in the it street? It was an argument. We got. Um, he came down. I had just got my car painted, and um, it was it's, it was hated. He was hating. He was probably being jealous. Yeah. And so he just spit on my car. So I went in. I yeah. went up to him and got my pistol. Said, "Get the shit off my car before I blow your fucking dick off." <laughs> and so. <laughs> He came back shooting. In my, I mean, I never shot nobody other than yeah. my baby daddy. And <laughs> no, I wasn't getting anywhere shooting. Yeah. So I yeah. started to run in the house and I reached for the door and it hit me up under the arm. Shit. Did, yeah, stupid question. Did it hurt? No. Yeah. When, you, when you're adrenaline going, you can't feel that shit. Yeah. No, it did not hurt. It yeah. hurt like hell the next day and when yeah. it was healing because yeah. it's, a, it's a muscle. So I couldn't, they couldn't sew it up. So okay. it was just a big ass hole there sure. that you had to let let your body heal back itself. So you sitting there with a hole in your what? Titty for about ooh, it was about a month. Yeah. Sure. You know, then you had to when you when I wore a bra, I had to like put pad in there. Mm. Then you had to pour like um a liquid like a water liquid to clean yeah. it. I had to clean it. Like oh three, yeah, four so times you don't get day. infected and stuff. Yeah, yeah. so it wouldn't get infected. Did the, at that point were you thinking you know what I'm you know maybe should get out of this drug trade thing? <laughs> well, when you're young, you don't think you can die. True, yeah. <laughs> you think, you know, you like, this, you know, I can't die. You get shot a couple times and I ba bounce back. You know, I was naive. I mean, I, not only was I young, I was a mother. Mm. It, it didn't really hit me until I got about 18. And I was like, well, shit, I got a young son and a daughter. Then I started thinking about, you know, the ghetto sucking up my son. My son yeah. getting killed. And yeah. My son going to jail and my kids becoming convicted felons. Mm. And, you know, I'm a high school, I'm a fucking... Uh, dropout, and I started thinking about my kids being yeah. a dropout. I was like, "Oh hell no! I gotta save my kids." And you know, one day a light bulb went on, and I was like, "This is it." Yeah. And I met my husband, and you know, he started to help me. T he well, he helped me turn my life around. Yeah. Well, why? Because you were quite. Because you were just coming out of that relationship previously, you must have been quite a handful, like for him <laughs> to take on. Um. Yes, I was because when you come out of a. When you've been in a bad relationship, you know, when you've been when you've been let down and abused and talked to in a kind of way, you got your guards up for the next person. And I had just told myself, nobody's never gonna treat me like that clown treated me. Mm. And so and my kid's father used to cheat all the time. So if my husband was five minutes late mm. for work, I would and from home. Yeah. I mean from home yeah. to you know if my husband was five minutes late getting home from work, I thought he was cheating. Yeah, well, that was fun for him. Well, you, did you just get very angry with him? Or? I used to get very angry and ball water <laughs> and where the fuck you been and holler. He was like, what is wrong <laughs> with you? He was like, you need to calm down. Everybody ain't like that last dude you had. <laughs> so, I mean, I brought a lot of pain into that relationship. Mm. And, you know, I mean, <clears throat> when I met him, uh, I lived in an apartment and then I couldn't pay my rent. And he's like, well, I'll get you an apartment. And I was like, well, you're going to move in and help me pay the rent because I can't. Mm. So he moved in. We, we, he put an apartment in his name. And he just started saying shit like, get a job. Let's get your life back together mm. and stuff like that, which was really hard for me. Why? Because I had never had a job. Yeah. So it's yeah. like you just, this whole world you lived in and then someone yeah, trying to drag like, you into the... I was like, who the fuck live like this? <laughs> <laughs> Who live like this and make $6 an hour? What the fuck is wrong with you, dude? 
that was my whole thing. I was like, don't nobody I know live like this. You know, yeah. if in the hood your lights get cut off, fuck you, electricity people. I can go cut my own shit back on. Yeah. You know, but my husband's like, no, you pay the bill. Why? <laughs> 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 you know, I mean, that's how I grew up. That's yeah. how I grew up. And, you know, when I moved in my own apartment, I paid my bills. And, you know, I didn't have much struggle because I had a lot of money coming in. Yeah. But when I got with him, everything had started to die down. And I was coming out of this really bad relationship. Sometimes I asked him, I was like, why did you deal with me? Because mm. I, t I remember telling my husband, I said, I don't love you, but I like you. I said, and I hope one day I can grow to love you. I said, you're not my type. You're a little too fat. <laughs> I said, but you're a nice guy. Yeah. And, and how, how did that go down? He was like, okay. Uh -huh. I think my husband, half of the time, he thought I was fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he thought I was crazy, but, you know, I was like, give me time because I, I, you know, and I would tell him once the relationship got a little older, I would tell him how I was treated by this dude. Mm. Like, I used to have nightmares of, of him coming back to get me, yeah. eating on me. Shit. And I would wake up crying. Shit. And I remember one night, my husband my husband used to work at Simmons Mattress. And I woke up one night and I was like, he was like, what's wrong? And I was like, I keep dreaming about Daryl beating me and he shooting me. And she, he was like, uh, well, can you go back to sleep and whoop his ass so I can, <laughs> so I can stay asleep? <laughs> and I thought that was the funniest shit. That, that's like post-traumatic stress disorder. It was post-traumatic stress. I yeah. mean, I went through a lot. To, get this, this guy out of my system and put my mm. life back together and you know if any little thing would just tick me off where mm. I would knock the shit out you I remember like my husband was me and his sister got into it and I hit him in the head with a phone book and I grabbed a knife and he's standing there like what the fuck is wrong with you but that's what I was used to yeah. I mean I was used to some dude punching me in my face and put his you know my baby daddy hit me in the head with a skate and I don't know what, like an ever... ice skate or no, not an ice skate. Thank God, <laughs> dang. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he don't ice skate. He already looked pretty gay roller skating. <laughs> 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 no, he, he hit me in the head with a roller skate with oh, the okay. stopper, and that bitch don't move. <laughs> Wherever it land, it just stay. <laughs> right. Boom. No, it was on the forehead. Oh so shit! Had a knot on my forehead like the fucking stopper on a skate. So, I mean, <laughs> he, he, just used to, he was a horrible piece of shit. Yes, he was. you shouldn't laugh, but. It is funny. <laughs> yes, you should laugh, but I'm an ice skate guy. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> so, you said about, because I've heard interviews with you where you were talking about your childhood, and, and, and your mother sounds quite a character. To, uh, to, she was a character. She yeah. was. I mean, she. I grew up in an alcoholic. Uh, my mom was an alcoholic, mm -hmm. and um, she was a single parent. And um, she, I, I realize now she did the best she could do. She 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 handed us what she was handed. Mm. You know, she wasn't handed shit, so she didn't hand us shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was it was rough. I mean, you know, she was in a very abusive relationship with my daddy. Okay. He beat on her. My mom my mom passed away when she was thirty nine years old. And mm. she um, she lost. Uh, he knocked out all of her teeth. Sure. So, you know, she was as I I never remember this lady being happy. Never. No. All she did was drink and smoke weed and cry. Shit. I'm surprised. As skinny as she was, she was skinnier than Whitney Houston when Whitney Houston was mm. 19. So I'm surprised she didn't <laughs> dry up yeah. from all that crying. Yeah, she just supposed to be on her last nerve. If you that, get that skinny, because she's kind of loose. No, she's always been small. She's oh, always okay. been a very small lady. She she couldn't gain weight for nothing. Yeah. But she um, you know, she was just very depressed. Yeah. And, she, and she, how did that affect the children? You you your brothers. Well, we got the butt end of it. You know, getting yeah. cussed out, getting knocked up inside the head, getting whooping for any little thing. Shit. You know, we we got we got the the bad part of it. You yeah. know, because. She did us like my daddy did her and the people before my daddy did her. And, you know, she was in the same type, uh, she was in the same type of situa situation I was with Daryl. Mm. My daddy was nine years older than my mom. Okay. By the time my mama was 19 or 20, she had already had six kids. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. You, so you think it's a generational thing? It just passes from Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's yeah. A, a cycle. Yeah. So... My whole thing was, I was like, I got to break this cycle with my kids. Yeah. 
Do you think you have? Oh, of course. I, I, my son is 28, mm -hmm. and he just had his first baby. He graduated, got a good job, never been to jail. Yeah. Don't steal, nothing like. You, if you see my kids, you're like, that's your mother? <laughs> <laughs> so how come you live in Indianapolis? If my husband works at Allison Transmission, which is a part of General Motors. Okay. So that's why I live here. So, yeah. so the comedy, so how did you first get started? I got started in comedy, um, um, I got custody of my sister four kids, so out the back in my relationship I had six kids. Wow. I'm 18 with six yeah. kids. And um, uh, we moved to Riverdale, mm -hmm. part of Georgia, called Riverdale, Georgia. And I just took a, I took a uh, trip to the welfare office and um, I used to have this little scheme where the more, the, the, the worst story I could tell a white, case, white caseworker, the more I could get her to feel sorry for me. Yeah. I was like, oh, I had two kids. By the time I was 15, my this married man, he shot me. You know how it is. So yeah, it's you play on the white guilt. Yeah. And, so, and the caseworker was really look out for me. But one month I got a black caseworker. Yeah. And I tried that bullshit. And this lady burst out laughing. Like, what the fuck are you laughing at? She was like, you should be a comedian. This shit is hilarious. I was like, what's funny? What's funny? I didn't get shit extra, and I ended up finding a career. Yeah. So she encouraged you to go into She downstairs. encouraged me. I still talk to her this day. She oh, sure wow. did. Yeah. She's my godmama. She encouraged me. She's like, you are hilarious. And I was like, uh, I don't see nothing funny. Yeah. Do you, think, I, do you think you're just a funny person? You know, some people are just funny. Whatever situation you put them in, like, were you funny when you were dealing drugs? Were you, yeah, now that I look back, yeah. yeah. I say some crazy shit. I just, you know, yeah. a lot of times, like, people think I'm playing, but I'm serious. Yeah. But I'm talking shit at the same time. Yeah. So. You kind of have to interpret you a little bit. You see yeah. I mean? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go Once on. you get to know me, you're like, uh, okay, now she's serious. And, you no, know, she's joking. But still, I might say some shit that's funny. A lot of time, I laugh at my damn self. <laughs> so, like, I was, I was thinking about this just as we were driving up, that is there any similarities to being a comedian and being a drug dealer? I mean, <laughs> is, is it? Yes. Yeah. Could you you got to hustle if yeah. you want your career to go anywhere. And is it a bit of a performance being a drug dealer as well? Is there a performance element or is it all business, 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 business? No, I think the performance part is when you put on your goal and you're riding your nice car and got everybody looking at you. Yeah. yeah that's when you're on stage as a yeah, drug dealer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On stage for me now is when I step on the stage. Yeah. So it's a lot of similarities. I, I use a lot of stuff that I learned from dealing drugs in the comedy business, like really work hard. Yeah. Like, um, when I was selling drugs, I always say the early bird catch the worm. Mm. So I would go out and I would set up, go to the trap, that's what they call them. Yeah. I would start, I would get there about seven or eight o'clock. The younger drug, I was young too, so. Was it seven in the morning? Yeah, seven yeah. in the morning. Yeah. A lot of drug dealers would get there at noon, you know, yeah. when they just waking up. But by that time, I already made a couple thousand dollars, so I'm ahead of you. Yeah. So with comedy, like I wake up at three or four o'clock in the morning and work yeah. on my work on my set, yeah. work on what I got to work on, because I feel like when everybody else is sleeping, I'm creating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when, when you were drug dealing, you know, like that early, you know, we, we ever, did you ever consciously think, well, you know what, maybe I'm doing the wrong thing, or you just all oh, like, I've got to survive, I've got to survive, I've got no, to survive? No, you don't think about what you're doing. You just yeah. think about how much money. You never, you know, you never take time to say, hey, this man is hurting his family yeah. when you just bought that TV from him. <laughs> <laughs> a nice telly <laughs> <laughs> no you don't ever think about you hey don't buy the car seat that baby gonna need that car seat <laughs> you like fuck that baby i don't know <laughs> jesus so you know, I, i've heard you never took drugs yourself though i've never done drugs other so, than a little weed back in the day but yeah. no drugs ain't never been my thing because a lot of dealers do take their own drugs no, as i don't stuff. even drink alcohol no right is that because of the child upbringing yes sort of i thing? used to look at my mom and say everything she do I would mm. never do it. Only thing I say I got for my mom, my, my mother was very funny. Mm. Now that I think, look back at yeah. it. And she cursed. I know how to curse. Uh, I heard she she tried to shoot you as well. Oh, she used to shoot at us all the time. What, what, why? Hold on, that's not that normal, the regular behavior, is it? Uh, oh, that ain't regular <laughs> behavior at all. She would be in <laughs> fucking jail now. She would, uh, <laughs> she would do stuff like if we didn't move fast enough, she would shoot in the air and the house. Poop all, bitch, move. So, like, <laughs> you got used to it. Yeah. The only thing, the, her shooting at me never really scared me once I got used to it. I just want to know where the fuck she kept getting all them bullets from. 
Yeah, because they don't. Bullets cost money. money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you wasting the shit out of some 22 bullets. <laughs> well, she, well, she'd have a little pistol and just go. Pew, pew. Yeah, in the air. She's like a cowboy or something. Yeah, like a fucking cowboy. <laughs> Yeah, she was a ghetto cowboy yeah, with no yeah. horse. <laughs> move. Yeah. What, did it work, though? Did you move around? Well, we got yeah, used to that shit. It was like a belt or a stitcher card. After you do something so much with kids, like, oh, this shit again? Yeah, yeah, It didn't scare us. It probably scared people who care. What the fuck? Your mama got a gun? Oh, she ain't going to do no shit but shoot the lights out. It's okay. That's all right, then. <laughs> so, like, when you first started doing comedy, because, you know, you said your act was quite black, Black orientated. It was urban. Yeah. Yeah. You okay. know the typical shit. I suck dick. I do this. Uh, just so, you know, and, you know talk about me and yeah. y'all ain't shit. The man batching and all that shit. Yeah. So when I moved here, and this is Morty's, was a, when I moved to Indianapolis, I came to Morty's and it was a mainstream club. So, it was, you know, it's not an urban setting where, you know, where everybody know about roaches and everybody yeah. know about black shit. Yeah. And so I started talking to the manager here and, um, telling him about my life and he was like this stuff is funny yeah. you should work on that so I that's when I started to change to yeah. talk about me and it was, was it quite liberating to talk about yourself yes yeah it, you know what it because for years I carried around all of that stuff and you know in the back of my head where which was pain yeah you know and when I started to share it on stage I started to feel free yeah you know it's, it's almost like somebody get molested and they never tell nobody but once you tell somebody, you it relieves. It, it's like you feel like you lost weight. Yeah, just yes, yeah. you feel a big relief. So once I started to talk about myself and what caused me a lot of pain, which was my kid's father, my my baby daddy, just the mm. shit I had been through. Yeah, I started to feel so much better about life. Well, did the audience react to it well? Because it's because you know, it, you're making it funny as fuck, and I mean it is. It sounds but. If you strip it all away, it's the story of a, you know a very a young girl, story. yeah, a young girl being <laughs> molested and being um, forced to. The audience took it, you know. Yeah. I was really shocked. What what, what shocked me? Uh, I'm sorry. Right. I was really shocked because it was a mainstream club. It was mostly white people. Yeah. And I was like, they gonna laugh at this shit? Okay. <laughs> but more, know. you know, I'm gonna tell more, more, more. Yeah. So I was, I, I really was shocked that yeah. they accepted it. Yeah, because it is, it's totally out of their experience, isn't it? It's totally out of their experience. And, you know, when you're talking about stuff like that, you got to craft it where you got to say it where, where they know it's horrible, but it's still funny. Yeah. Plus, I never, you, you never hear me complain about my situation I was in. Yeah. I laugh about it. So when I laugh, it allow other people to laugh, too. And I also yeah. learned that a lot of people went through the, some of the same shit I went through. Oh, okay. So you kind of I connect you, yeah, somewhere yeah, yeah. In, in my comedy. If I'm doing 45 minutes to an hour, it's something you're going to be able to connect with. Yeah. You might, you probably didn't have a baby at 14, but maybe you know somebody who had a baby at yeah. 14. Cause you get, it could easily become quite tearful almost in a way. If it was told, if you couldn't tell it very well, you know, like you, yeah. you stood on stage and told your now, story. It, it, it don't sell to everybody. I was just yeah. in Sacramento a couple of months ago and it was a first for me. Mm. I, the whole time, this black lady just stared at me. And she's, I said, oh, shit. I could tell when they listening to the, 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 the fucked up part and yeah. not laughing. Yeah. And she was just listening. And so finally, I said, what's wrong with you? Why are you not laughing? She's like, I feel so sorry for you all. Oh, she just no. bust out crying. <laughs> so what the fuck? And I was like, I've never made a black woman cry. You like get a white woman every now and then. Yeah. I feel so sorry for you. And I said, well, baby, I said, I'm happy. I'm happy. I found a good man. I raised four beautiful kids. I turned my life around. I said, you shouldn't be crying because I went through this shit. If you're going to cry, be crying because I came through this shit. Yeah, like tears of joy. Yeah, of tears of joy. And I said, if you really want to make me happy, I just I feel so sorry for you. I said, well, you want to make me happy? She said, I just want you to be happy. I said, buy all my T-shirts. <laughs> 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 and did she? She didn't buy shit. So she didn't really <laughs> be happy. No, she didn't be happy. <laughs> she, you know, she, I think what it was, she had been through something in her life, yeah. and she couldn't believe how open I was about my situation. And what I told her, I said, you know, for me to be hitting you that hard with this stuff I'm saying on stage is something that you going through that you mm. ain't telling somebody yeah. that you don't know how to deal with. Yeah. I said, but hit me up on Facebook. We could talk. Okay. So your um, nickname was Rabbit. Yes. So 
Why? Why rabbit? Uh, they say I like carrots. I guess that's what my stepdaddy said, but <laughs> I don't know why rabbit. But it's stuck. It just, yeah. So, um, because you got an autobiography coming out next year, I believe. I got a memoir. In a, April a memoir. Mm. Mm. So you know, they're going to tell your whole life story. It's going to tell all this a whole mm. life story more into detail. Yeah. You yeah. know how shit really got started. How you know what I really went through. Stuff mm. that I I would never tell. On stage because yeah. I can't make it funny. Yeah, I, mean, I share some stories that I've never shared with anyone. Yeah, pretty tough. I scratched I, the surface on a lot of shit. Because yeah, I heard some story about you, the bootleg club. And you used to bootleg work, house. My yeah, granddaddy but, was the bootleg man. So what's the bootleg house? Uh, we, uh, where you sell alcohol at your house without a license. Okay, <laughs> yeah. And you were like, I heard, you know, d d you had to, you, you were in, you were how. You were kind of forced to do criminal activities there? Yes. My mom used to have me go in people's pocket and get their wallets when they get drunk. And Shit. so she would give me $5 a person. That's, that's not that's bad. That's not bad for <laughs> a seven or eight year yeah. old. Yeah. So how many people were you rolling? Um, sometimes two or three a night. Okay. So it's not the most lucrative job. Well, for a kid, all I want to do was candy and pack, man. Yeah, I mean, an eight-year-old with $25, <laughs> that's a lot of money. <laughs> but did you think it was wrong, or you just thought it was... I was a kid. Yeah. I wanted to play Pac-Man. I wanted them to get the fuck out of my house, too. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, at first, I was thinking, if I steal their money, they'll stay the hell out of our house. Yeah. But they just kept coming back. So, so they, they never noticed the money going? They so. noticed they got robbed, but I don't think they know who robbed them. I don't know. I didn't deal with that part of the situation. <laughs> By the time they was woke, I was down there playing Pac-Man. Yeah. We any good at Pac-Man? Fuck yeah, I love Pac-Man. Yeah? You still play now? <laughs> I can play. Yeah? I can play. You should yeah. get in a, I think they have a world championship. You should. I ain't got time for that shit. I don't <laughs> play like that. <laughs> That's what people who ain't got nothing else. Now all those people probably live with their parents. <laughs> Well, you know, so, so say your son turned around and said, I'm going to play get video games professionally. My son fucking <laughs> play video games. He should play professionally. Because yeah. he done lost a lot of jobs behind Xbox. Oh, uh, okay. He will call in if he's in a championship. Shit, I'm no like, uh, no, that's no reason. Uh, I can't come to work because my football team on Xbox going to the Super Bowl. Bitch! <laughs> <laughs> like he's going to the real Super Bowl. <laughs> Do you think... Like you, because you've got your own children now. And of, you know, obviously they've grown up. Well, some of the older ones have, you know, probably got the tail end of how you were living. Do, do, do you sometimes tell them you don't know how good you've got it? And oh, all the time. They don't know how good they got it. I call my kids. I said I have a set of uh, Medicaid kids and a set of Blue Cross Blue Shear kids. <laughs> so Medicaid is a free health care. They yeah. get poor kids and Blue yeah. Cross Blue Shear. You need a job. Yeah, they don't know how good they got it. Yeah. They, you know, like my kids now, they're too good to eat school lunch. What, bitch? I die for school lunch every day. <laughs> Free lunch. You know, they they don't they got their own rooms and mm. they got AC and they don't have to chop wood for your mama to fry the chicken on a barbecue grill. Yeah. You know, you ain't, you ain't gotta you ain't gotta follow your mama in no fucking grocery store back with no gro with no grocery store basket to the laundromat. That, that's how you got to the laundromat. Shit. You yeah. everybody ain't gotta walk to the post office to cash your food stamps. So I mean, I know you're not a politician, but you know, there's a lot of people like that, and living's like that still in this country. You know, what could be done about it? <sighs> it's a big question. Uh, yes, that is a big question. I don't know. I mean, I think some, I've learned this, no matter how much you hand people or give people in this world, they still got to want something for themselves. Like, you got programs, or you, I mean, there's some programs out there. Mm. Instead of some people, you know, going through the program and doing the right thing, a lot of them take advantage of it. And I was one of those people mm. where when the government paid for my daycare, I stayed at home and split the daycare check with the chick. <laughs> God forgive me, but I mean, you got to want out. I mean, yeah. you really do. You got to want to make a change in your life. And, it, it, and if, if there's programs out there to help you. Mm. I mean, like I, I just took in my niece a, two years ago and I didn't think people was really living like that. Kid, you know, I see all the time, you know, kids are missing meals. I was like, ain't no damn kids missing no meal with all these food stamps running mm -hmm. around here. And kids really are missing meals. Yeah. You know, kids, I just, my, I picked up, like I said, I picked up my niece two years ago, and they was dirt ass poor. And I was like, I can't believe people live like this. But mm -hmm. she but was living like that because she wouldn't go get a fucking job. She was just sat home. No, she got four fucking kids and she's 24. 
So a lot of, a lot of times, not everybody, a lot of people dig bigger holes for themselves. Yeah. You continue to have kids yeah. that you cannot afford. You go out here, if you can get a tattoo and you can get your fucking hair done, well, take that money invested in getting the fuck out the hood and making mm. a better life for your kids. Yeah. But people don't think like that, do they? No. So yeah. you, what you do is you you raise more you raise more motherfuckers to go to jail in your environment. Mm. Mm. So how big do you think you're gonna get, comedy wise? Oh, I thought you said my weight. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were getting punched in the face. <laughs> If, yeah, oh, if you wanna, no, <laughs> I know I'm like losing fucking weight. <laughs> it's difficult uh, to lose weight here. I mean, the food. The food is yeah. so big. Yeah, I mean, like, I've put on like five, six pounds already, and I've been here a week. Uh, and y'all, in London, they don't probably have that fake ass McDonald's. McDonald's probably serve y'all real meat. No, it's still the same shit, but I mean, people don't eat out as much, you know, really. You know, like, we don't have as many Kentucky. You just fast food everywhere here. Yeah, everywhere. 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 And no one walks anywhere. Oh fuck no! Why? Walk is you get, brilliant. You get you you get your th- well. People in my neighborhood walk, but they all white people. <laughs> <laughs> we the black family that run in the house and lock the door. What the fuck them white people jogging for? <laughs> what do they want? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, my neighbors the other day, everybody's on bikes. I'm like, what is going on with all these bicycles? Ever? I don't own a fucking bike, okay? You should get one, man. I should get one. So yeah. I, one of my neighbors like, hey, Miss Pet. I was like, hey. And then she's like, are you going to ride your bike? And I'm like, for what? She's like, it's bike month. I'm like, hell no. I'm going to get on a bike for. And I got a brand new car with AC. Because <laughs> it's good for you. I, I know it's good for you. But, but I don't know how big I'm gonna get. I don't know. I mean, hopefully one day I'm, I'm really praying one day I, that I get a sitcom. I want a sitcom so yeah. bad. I've had this book for the last ten, probably, probably. Well, I've been doing coming about twelve years. So probably the last eight, nine years, I have I had this book where I wrote down like little episodes of. Oh, okay. If I ever got a sitcom. Yeah, yeah. I hope I can use it one day. Well, you you get larger than life if you. So I mean, you make good TV for sure. I, mean, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Can I ask you to recount a story that I heard you recount elsewhere? It's about your uncle. At the, <laughs> at the, I get asked about <laughs> Uncle Cecil all the yeah. fucking time. Uncle C- is, he, is he still with us, No, uncle? he's dead. He's yeah. dead. He's been dead. Did he die happy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Granddaddy was still buying Uncle Cecil pussy when he <laughs> 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 My Uncle Cecil was, uh, he was a... Uh, Retarded, mentally ill. I don't know. The fuck. Yeah. So, you well, know when you see Uncle Caesar, he was just part of the family. Yeah. The only thing different with Uncle Caesar, he would cripple. His two legs went in together. Oh, uh, okay. So every every other Friday or every Friday, my granddad would buy him pussy from hookers or whoever wanted to fuck Uncle Caesar for yeah. you know whatever granddad was paying him. But <laughs> Uncle Caesar needed a, a start to getting the dick in. So it was me and my sister's job to hold his two legs back until he stick his dick in. So. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever been in a room with a retarded dude getting pussy, but they get excited before they stick it in. And so I'm like, Uncle Caesar, put the dick in. I want to go play Pac Man. And you know, he's sitting there with a dick about bigger than that camera back there, just waving, like smiling. What the fuck is you smiling for? But once he got started, oh, he knocked the trillion off the pussy. <laughs> <laughs> but we wasn't allowed to leave out the room till he got a head start. Oh, so you, but you wouldn't stay to the end. You no, <laughs> we don't see that bullshit. <laughs> we saw that shit every weekend. Holy Uncle Cecil leg back. And and how old were you when this was happening? Probably seven. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so Uncle, what did Uncle Cecil do the rest of the time? Just he sit. used to sit on. He was a cripple, and uh, mm. he used to go to like a special school for handicapped people. But during the day, he would just sit on the porch, and everybody walk on the porch. He'd be like, "Hey, girl, give me two nickels. Two nickels make a." Dime. But if you gave him dimes, he would whoop your fucking ass. He didn't like dimes. No. So he would walk around with like he had a belt on tight, real, real tight, like retarded style. Yeah. And he would have to <laughs> I didn't realize it was a style. <laughs> like super tight around yeah. his waist because he had all these <laughs> coins in his pockets. Oh, okay. Full of nickels. He loved nickels. And he would never eat out of a plate. Yeah. My granddaddy fed Uncle Cecil out of a pot. And it was crazy because he ate out the same pot and the handle had to be burnt on the end. 
Oh. Don't ask me why. I don't know. But he ate whatever. Say if you was cooking grits, eggs, and, yeah. and biscuit and gravy. You just throw everything in that like soup. And that's mm. how he ate it out the pot. So, but so like, I, I'm interested, the nickel bit. So if I gave him a nickel, he would. He attack. liked you, but he oh, didn't he, like dimes. Oh, so if I gave him a dime, he'd, he'd beat the shit out of so you. He's like a psychotic rain man. So. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> he, his words were, hey girl, give me two nickels. Two nickels make a dime. And then every other Friday night, he'd get the sex. Some pussy. <laughs> and he used to have seizures all the time. No, so, no, yeah, good talk. But he would have seizures all the time. And I remember, I don't, I, I look at it now, I was like, what the fuck were we doing it? So we never called 911 when he had a seizure. We was taught to put him on his side, stick a spoon in his mouth. When he come through, when he come through, through Gee. have him a cold Pepsi ready. I don't know why we gave that man a Pepsi when he just had a fucking seizure from him too much sweet. <laughs> he had a diabetic fan. <laughs> <laughs> but we always had him a cold Pepsi ready. Well, he sounds quite like he had a nice life. He had a nice life, you know. Granada bought him a lot of pussy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Holding his legs. We, 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 just hold, we just pulled him apart so he can get started. Because, you know, his knees But knocked. did you not think this was a bit of a strange thing to do? I was a kid. I was doing what Granada told me to do. Yeah. That's which, true. Which was hold Uncle C, have him get him a kick start. Uh, so, <laughs> now I think it's fucked up. But <laughs> it's hold somebody's leg back while they stick a dick in somebody. And the prostitute, like, just yeah, laying the there. prostitute? Doing? Well, whoever she was was just laying there. I'm yeah. like, why don't you fucking happen? Yeah, why didn't she? I don't know. <laughs> it was me and, me and my sister's job. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Cece got all the pussy. All the pussy. I don't know what granddaddy gave him, but. I he guess Uncle Caesar had to relieve himself. He did. Okay, I think we got it. Fly. Got that I don't give a fuck, give me. That's true indeed, like. Hey, did he, biggie, get biggie?